Hey, hey, everybody, this is Larry. This is, I think, day 10 of the Lico Day Challenge. If it's not, then whatever. Hit the like button, hit subscribe button, join me on Discord. Let me know what you think about today's bomb. And today, I am here in Stockholm, in Sweden. So I went to the most famous site, which is an IKEA. And here I have, I'm getting IKEA meatballs. That's it. Haha. -ha. All right, back to the problem. I'm not gonna lie. I got additional balls because was hungry, so maybe it didn't end up being that much cheaper anyway. But I got a little pastry thing and 12 more balls. I don't know how I feel about it. Too much IKEA, but this is my only IKEA trip of the uh, of the visit. I hope. All right, that's it. Yeah, uh, everybody, thanks for watching. Uh, hope you liked the intro. Hit the like button, the subscribe button, join me on Discord, and all these good things. Uh, yeah, I am in Stockholm, so let's do day 10 of the Lico Day Challenge. Um, today we have 29.18 minimum equals sum of two arrays after replacing zeros. You're given two arrays, nums one, nums two. Okay, you have to replace zeros with strictly positive such that the sum of elements of both arrays uh, become equal. Return minimum equals sum you can obtain, or negative one makes it impossible. Okay. Uh, they have to be strictly positive, right? Okay. I think so this is just thinking through all the possibilities, right? Um, okay, so th if there's no zeros in one of them, then... Um, yeah, so okay. So there's a min and there's a max, right? Um, and all you need is one zero because... In, in that, you have to find all the flexibility that you want, right? After you have one zero, so... At, and then after that, everything has just become um, having zeros and ones, uh, and all the zeros just becomes ones, right? So, okay. Let me regroup a little bit. I'm kind of going a little bit too fast. What I mean is that for this problem, this is what I call an ad hoc problem. And there's no, no trick about it, no patterns about it per se. It's just about putting together all the things that you've learned and figure out a strategy, uh, something that's unique to this problem, playing around with this properly and trying to solve it in a way. And for me, well, the first observation is that, okay, if you have a zero, it has to be at least a one, right? So that's your minimum. And then the second thing is that uh, if you have a zero anywhere in that array, you can make that sum as big as you want. You may not able to make it as small as you want, but you're able to make it as big as you want, right? And as long as you do that, then um, everything just becomes a case analysis, right? Because for example, in this case, um, yeah, this has to be one. So then what's the minimum of nums one? Minimum nums one has to be, um, let's see, what's that? Four, six, right? And then maximum is infinity. And here, minimum is five, maximum is five. So then they don't overlap and that's it. So here maybe we can write something like we could calculate the intervals and whether they overlap, right? So nums, maybe we could get um, a helper function go like get interval of a nums, right? And then this becomes uh, if, okay, so maybe we have an infinity is used some big number, right? So if zero is in nums, then or just has zero is equal to this, right? Um, so then now what? So then min, min is equal to sum of nums plus the count of, um, maybe this isn't quite right, but um, basically, okay, so it's the sum of nums and then for x in nums where if, yeah, I know you could write this in a cleaner way, but I'm just writing it this way. Then we increment by one, right? Because we have to set that at least one. So that's your minimum. Maximum is either, um, either, um, so maximum is just also equal to sum of nums. But if it has a zero, then now it can be infinity, right? So max is equal to infinity. So then now we re return the, the intervals. And then now maybe we could get the interval of nums one. So maybe int one for interval one, and two is equal to get interval of nums two. And then now we just have to check whether it has an overlap, right? Oh, hmm. Okay. Now I mean, I I, I forgot. I I was 
thinking in my head that I have to return a true false, but in this case, you have to return the minimum if it's true, right? So, okay, we could check for this first, which is that um, if, uh, in let's see, how do I write this, right? So, if, um, if the max is less than the min of the other one, Maybe we should use the name top a bit. Yeah. If this is the case, return negative one, right? Because that means that the max you can go is not as big as the min as the other one. Otherwise, we return. Uh, I'm going to hunt a thousand for now because I I, did, I just want to make it binary, right? True force to kind of test the examples real quick. Now before we go further, and this one that's the one that we ex we wanted to make sure that works, and this one it's okay we could fix that right. And then now what's the min? Well, the min minimum is just going to be um well the min it's just going to be min of int one of zero and two of zero right because that's just the min of the two numbers. That's not right. Um, I mean max of these two because yeah basically you know that the two intervals inter intersect. So then the max of the minimum thing is going to be the, the first point of which it intersects. I'm messing up. I'm a little bit rushing it, I suppose. Let's give it a quick submit. And yeah, there you go. Hmm. Slower than I anticipated, honestly. 3, 40% is, I mean, I don't, eh, okay. Maybe it's because I did some nums, some of nums twice. How big is n? I didn't even look at n because the reason is honestly just because this is linear time, right? When it's linear, I don't really look at it, though maybe I could optimize slightly. I, apparently I was faster than I was last time though. So maybe you can do um, a very easy one is total is equal to sum of nums, right? We can do this. Um, and then maybe we have, um, there is like a thing, right? So maybe you have like sum of x for x, well, um, one for x if x is equal to zero, right? So then zeros is equal to this. So then now min is equal to total plus zeros. The zeros have a y, I always forget. Definitely not at the end though. Um, and then this is if zeros is greater than zero. All right, so this is should be slightly faster, we'll see. Right, okay, only slightly faster. I don't know, but yeah. Um, Eh, you can probably still do this in a cleaner way because I still did two passes, but I'm not that worried about it. I don't know. Um, yeah, this is going to be linear time, constant space because we look at each element constant number of times. And yeah, we just have like five uh, memory allocation. So that's it. That's all I have for this one. Let me know what you think. Thanks for watching. And yeah, stay good, stay healthy to your mental health. I'll see y'all later and take care. Bye bye.